We're going to talk about special right triangles today, starting in our ISN. No, you do not have to write this down. So this is something I just want you to watch right now. I don't want you to write anything. I just want you to observe and listen to what I'm talking about about these figures. This first figure is a square. If I draw in the diagonal on that square, what did I do to it? Cut it in half. Yes, Alyssa. Now, what do you know about this angle if this is a square? Okay, that's 90. If you did this diagonal, so is this one, then what did you do to the angle in the corner here? How big are these? Okay. Again, this is something that you want to be watching, not playing around with something like your phone or whatever. So if the sides of this triangle, this triangle right here, the sides of this square were one, how long would this be? The diagonal. How would I find it? What kind of triangle is this? What do you, how do you find a missing side on a right triangle? If you don't know, that's a big problem. We've been doing it all year. What was the first section of chapter eight? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now that's all I was looking for is to say Pythagorean theorem. So I would take leg squared plus leg squared or x squared, the hypotenuse is equal to one squared plus one squared. And I'm just asking you to watch right now. Now, one squared is one, one plus one is two. Take the square root to get the answer. That'd be the square root of two. Okay, so this is the square root of two. All right, now, so if I have a 45-45 triangle, a right triangle with two 45s, meaning it's half of a square, that means it's isosceles, the sides are congruent. And so if this side was two, this side would also be two. You could then find the diagonal by doing x squared, the hypotenuse, this would be your hypotenuse, and it would equal two squared plus two squared. Okay, now, two squared is four. Four plus four is eight. Then you take the square root. Can you put your phone away, please? Done. Uh, take the square root of eight. You could break that down. That's why we talked about radicals yesterday. Eight is four times two, which is two root two. So this side's two times the square root of two. Okay, if you like to put it in my bucket, then keep on playing with it. Donovan, I'm not joking. All right. So if I have a 45, 45, 90, what if I had a side that was three? What do you think is going to happen? trying to teach you, like, have you see where the pattern comes from. If this side was 3, this side would be, and this would be, take a guess. That's 1 square root of 2, this is 2 square root of 2, this would be 3 square root of 2. It's always that way, okay, always. So there is a pattern for these triangles. Let me go back here now to... On your paper, you have, I don't know what happened there. I thought I just erased everything, but I didn't. Okay, so let me get that off of here. Your ISN, you've got this box, and it's showing the pattern that I just developed for you. That if the sides are N and N, then the hypotenuse would be N leg times the square root of 2. This is a model for all 45, 45, 90 triangles. So if I have added an example of, say, the, even these were 5, and this was a right angle, and this was a 45, 45, 90, even if you knew just one side, then this would be 5, this would be 5 times the square root of 2. Now, they get a little harder than that sometimes. So I'm going to talk to you about another thing that can happen. So if, say, let's say you have a 45, 45, 90. Will you draw one up here, please? because I'm going to show you one of the harder ones. So if you were given that the hypotenuse was 6, there is a way, because this is n times the square root of 2. I could show you mathematically why it's going to be what it is. 
So I'm going to do it this one time, and then I'm going to kind of give you a way to figure it out in a short way. All right, so these legs, these would be N. Okay, I don't know what they are, so I'm going to figure it out. Um, the hypotenuse, you have the 6. So in the pattern, that would equal N times the square root of 2. Are you with me? It would be the N times the square root of 2 part. So I'm going to solve that by dividing both sides by the square root of 2. But a long time ago, I talked to you, I've, I've mentioned to you that you can't have radicals in your basement. That's like a mathematical no-no. You're not supposed to have radicals in your basement, so you get them out of your basement by rationalizing the denominator. You multiply by square root of 2, top and bottom. That would give you 6 root 2 over, what's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? Well, we talked about that yesterday. Square root of something times square root of something is the something. Okay? So square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is square root of 4, is 2. All right, now, cut that 6 in half, and you get 3 root 2. So these would be 3 times the square root of 2 on both of those legs. All right, so here's the shortcut. All right now, I just showed you mathematically how to get it one time. You could remember that and try it later, or you can do what I'm going to tell you now. Okay? If you will look here at your pattern, it's giving you some direction. This is a right angle. These are 45. The sum of the angles you know to be 180. It's still the same. The hypotenuse will always be the square root of 2 times the length of the side of the triangle. In the next box on your paper, right down here, that's the little trick. All right. If you are given the hypotenuse without a square root of 2, you're going to divide it by 2 and put on a square root of 2. Okay, that's what I was just showing you on that problem right here. Take half, okay, 6 divided by 2 times the square root of 2. That's what your side would have equaled. So if your hypotenuse has no square root of 2 on it, you're going to do 6 times the square root of 2 divided by 2, and that's where I got the 3 root 2. All right, that's just a shortcut for doing that without doing all this work, okay? Now, we need to do a lot of practice, so don't, don't panic if you feel a little overwhelmed at the moment or not really sure where we're headed. We're going to do some examples now. So if you would look here, this one's an easy one. We got the 45, 45, 90. We've got a leg that is 8. So the other leg is also 8, and the hypotenuse is 8 times the square root of 2. So in this problem, x is 8 root 2. The second example, find the x. You got the hypotenuse here with 3 root 2 on it. Take off the root 2, and you've got x, which would be 3. These would both be 3. Okay, those are the easy kind. If you're given a leg, and if you're given a hypotenuse with a square root on it. Okay, so next we're going to look at, and I put these in the weird place, sorry about that. These are your next examples. So if you have a, a 4 here, then what would x be? Well, these two would be both 4, and this would be 4 times the square root of 2. Okay, so x equals 4 times the square root of 2. The next one, you've got 24 root 2 on the hypotenuse, and that's n times the square root of 2. So what's the n? It's 24. Okay, so you put 24 on the legs. So x is 24. Now you get to the hard kind. This is no, this is the hypotenuse with no square root of 2 on it. Okay, what was the rule? It was divide, uh, multiply by the square root of 2 and divide by 2. So n will equal. 16 times the square root of 2 divided by 2. Now, what is that? You can take half of the 16, so these would be 8 root 2 each. This one, again, 
has is the hypotenuse with no square root of 2. So you're going to follow that rule where you take half of it and put on the square root of 2. So you take 18, you multiply it by the square root of 2, and you divide by 2 to get x. So x is going to be 9 times the square root of 2 for those. Right? That's the shortcut. How we feel okay so far, I hope? I know it's a little bit weird. And then we have to put it all together. So we have another one to look at. The next, so what we had here, oh, I already did all those, didn't I? My bad. I really wish I would have connected. The hard kind, this is when you do that rule right there. Okay, so if you want to draw these lines, that might help you with your um, connecting to which one you're supposed to be doing. So if the hypotenuse has no square root of 2, this is what it says. Multiply by the square root of 2 and divide by 2. All right, now I would like to go back, guys, to uh, show you the second pattern that we're looking at today. An equilateral, wait one second here. I want to get rid of something that I already put on here. I want to talk, have you start from the beginning, so. All right. This is an equilateral triangle. Okay. How big are the angles of an equilateral triangle? All right. So we learned that already that these are 60. If I draw in the altitude, I just did something to the angle at the top. What did I do? Cut it in half. So how big would these be? Guys, it was 60. Now these are 30. Okay. I drew a altitude, so this is the right triangle. Okay. I don't do this because it's, um, you know, Good for my health. I'm trying to tell, teach you or have you understand why the patterns are what they are. That's why I'm showing you this. Okay, so it really can help you get this to sink in a little bit better and make sense. So please hang in there with me. If this equilateral triangle had sides that were two, what would I have done right here to this base if I drew in the altitude? How big would this piece be and this piece be? These are two. Okay, this is also two guys, the whole thing. How big are each of them now? One. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Got it? All right, because the altitude cuts the base in half. It, it always does in, this, in, in an equilateral triangle. So now I've got two 30, 60, 90s. And this is just watching. You don't have to write anything down. Do not have to write anything down right now. I just want you to observe. Okay, so what if I wanted to find the height right here? Or I could call that X. I could use one right triangle here. And this is the short leg. This would be the long side or long leg. Oh, I've been doing that in blue, excuse me. Whatever, I want to change my colors up here. I'll do this in pink. Well, that didn't look good. Whatever, just I'll do it later. I'll color better. I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem on this triangle. Okay, and I'm going to find that length x. So I'm going to say x squared plus 1 squared equals 2 squared. So x squared plus 1 equals 4. I would subtract 1 and get x squared equals 3. I would take the square root and x would be the square root of 3. Okay, now I'm going to make one where I'm going to find this again, and this is 4, so how big is this? That'd be 2 and 2, okay? And then I could find this because I'm going to use just one of these triangles, and this would be a 60, and this would be a 30. So I'm going to do x squared plus 2 squared equals 4 squared. Four, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16. I know I'm going quick because I'm just showing you something. Subtract 4 and you get 12. Read. Take the square root of 12. Now, this is why I was teaching you radicals yesterday and simplifying them. What can I simplify that to? 
I would break 12 down into four times three. I would bring out the square root of four and start his new life as the number two. So this would be two root three. Okay, so now look at the pattern. If you have a 30, 60, 90, and you are given the hypotenuse was, say, six, how big would this be? Four, two, two, one, six, three. And this would be one square root of three, two square roots of three, three square roots of three. This is the pattern for a 30, 60, 90, and it's always that. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is the special 30, 60, 90, and we'll draw one example over here. So let's draw in the altitude on this equilateral triangle. Now you're going to do one on your paper. This would be a right angle. These would be 60 in the base corners. The top angles would be 30 because we bisected a 60. If this is some number n, well, I guess I don't need to do that. You have that coming up, don't you? With a bunch of n's, let's put numbers on it. All right, what is, you guys pick a number. Let's, let's pick an even number, though, for right here. 8? Okay. If that was 8, then this would be 4, and this would be also 4. But we're going to typically only be doing one right triangle, but this would be 8 as well. And in the middle, it would be 4 times the square root of 3. And I can prove it by doing, say you're trying to find the height, if you want to make this be x, it would have been x squared plus 4 squared equals 8 squared. And you're not going to have to do this all the time. You're just going to follow the pattern. x squared plus 16 equals 64. If you subtract 16 from both sides, you would get um, 48. Is that right? Okay. And then remember yesterday when we did the square root of 48? We realized that 48 could break down to 16 times 3, and that gives us x is 4 times the square root of 3. And that's exactly what we thought it would be because we followed the pattern. All right, so I just proved it again. Does anybody still need this? Okay. So I wanted to show you why the side, the long leg, in a 30, 60, 90 is short leg times the square root of 3. That's what it is. And the hypotenuse compared to the short leg is double it. So there are two sides. One's half of the other, right? The longest one, you take half of it, you get the shortest one. And then you put a square root of 3 on the short one and put it on the long leg. Okay, so let's move on to the pattern here. And this is your directions to do it. What this is telling you, and I'm gonna, I highlighted my short leg or the end side. I've got something to fix over here on the um, left hand side. So I highlighted this pink, I did the uh, long leg green, and I did the hypotenuse blue. So over here, if you like using highlighters, this is about the long legs. I'm just making it match the picture. And this is about if you're given the short leg. The hypotenuse was in blue, so this is what you do if you're given the blue side. Okay, so on my examples, what I was going to do is I was going to highlight them in colors so you can kind of relate back to this list that you're going to be able to use. Now, i got to read some of these directions to you over here, and I want you to correct something. We, of course, we know that's a 90 degree angle. We know this one's 60. We know this one's 30. So I went ahead and wrote those on there. I didn't write 90 here because you guys know that box means 90. You start off with this short leg and we call it N. It will always be, the hypotenuse will always be the short, two times the length of the short leg. So two times the N goes here for the pattern. The side over here is called the long leg. I'm going to be calling that the long leg, LL. I'm going to be calling this short leg SL. 
and I'm going to be calling the hypotenuse H just to get you going. Now, how you get the long leg is this will always be, this side here, the long leg will always be the square root of 3 times the length of the, this should not say triangle, it should say short leg. Right. Then you've got some directions over here that if you're starting off with your short leg, because you only get to get one part when you do these problems. They only give you one part. You can't do Pythagorean theorem with one part. You have to end up doing the pattern. Okay. So if you know this is your short leg, and it is, okay, because the 30 would be up here, and the short leg is always across from the small angle. Short leg is 8. That means the hypotenuse is 2 times the length of it. So if I'm given the short leg, the hypotenuse is 2 times it, so it would be 16, 2 times 8. The long leg would be the short leg times the square root of 3, so this would be 8 times the square root of 3. We okay? All right, now. So if you were doing a problem and it said what's x, you would maybe write in the blank x equals 8 root 3 and the y in this problem was 16. It doesn't matter what one you start with when you're solving it, but if you want to color those, I'm going to quick color them. My hypotenuse was here. It's um, this one. It's the y. The short leg or long leg was x. The long leg over here is down at the bottom. And the little side is the 8th, and on here it's the x. All right, so hopefully that helps to relate back here what you're starting with. So in this one, I've got the long leg I'm starting with. It says up here, if you start with the long leg in it with a square root of 3 on it, and this one has a square root of 3 on it, the short leg, you just take off square root of 3. So it would be. 9. And then your hypotenuse would be the short leg times 2. So 9 times 2, and this would be 18. Y is 18. Okay. Got a few more. Okay, so I think I did um, the short leg in pink. That would be the Y on this one and the X on this one. I did the long leg in green. And remember, long leg and short leg make the right angle. And the hypotenuse is always across from the 90, and it's the longest side. Okay, so these are in this format. This one has the hypotenuse given. If you are given the hypotenuse, you find the short leg by dividing the hypotenuse by 2. So we do 20 divided by 2, and we get 10. So y is 10. If you know the short leg, you get the long leg by multiplying the short leg by the square root of 3. So that's going to be x is 10 root 3. Okay, this time, um, this is the hard kind. They gave me the long leg, and it has no square root of 3. So if you look at the bottom of the box, it says, if you have long leg and there's no square root of 3, then to get the short leg, you're going to need to, I had this next to that box, to get the short leg, you're going to need to take the long leg, 12, multiply it by the square root of 3, and divide by 3. So that would be x. I can divide 12 by 3. That is 4. So the short leg is 4 root 3. x equals 4 root times the square root of 3. To get the hypotenuse, you take the short leg and you multiply it by 2. So you've got to do 2 times 4 square roots of 3, which would be 8 square roots of 3. A lot to do, a lot to remember, but you're going to have your ISN to follow the pattern. Okay, now let's go to the worksheet. 
and I got to, I've already um, got to erase because I did these earlier. Okay, while you guys get into your packet, I would leave out your rules on your paper, please. Because you would want to leave your ISN open, open so that you can look at those um, rules. Practice them. And then so, at some point, you'll stop having to do them. I'm going to post on the wall um, the rules. Basically, I'll just post pictures of the side N, N root 3, blah, 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 for each of these figures. Okay, so let's try these, and we're going to go kind of quick. If I can get this, sorry, I meant to open up a blank one, but fortunately, I didn't have time to find it. All right, go back. Here we are. This is the rule again for your 45, 45, 90. The legs are x and x, and the hypotenuse is that leg times the square root of 2. This is all about patterns. I changed the x's to n's on there. If you'd like to change those, I think there's, are they, did I change them already on your worksheet or no? No? You can make them n's. I just think it gets confusing if you leave X's on them, because then we go and find our problems have X's on them a lot, and I don't want you to confuse those X's with that. All right, here we go, let's start. What we're using is the 45, 45, 90. You've got the pattern right up there on your paper, so I'm just writing it here to show you what I'm talking about, N, N, N times the square root of two. Okay, so if this leg is three, the other leg is, 3, and the hypotenuse is 3 root 2. Oh, you would write down x is 3 root 2 and y is 3 if you were given a quiz. This is a 45. If you have one 45 and a 90, you know you have another 45. So this has a leg of 7. That means the other leg is also 7, and the hypotenuse would be 7 times the square root of 2. Number 3. What would the legs be? In the pattern, you've got the hypotenuse. This is, okay, I'm going to label it. That's the hypotenuse. These are legs. How big would the legs be? If you're following the pattern, they better be four. Okay, they're both four. So x is four, y is four. If you're following the pattern, number four, you have to follow the pattern, else you're not going to be successful with this. If um, this is 8, then y is also 8, and x is 8 times the square root of 2. Okay. Look at number 5. Try number 5. What x and y are going to be the same? Because they're the legs. So if you're given the hypotenuse, you take off the square root of 2, and the legs are 7 apiece. Okay, now let's start asking you guys. 6 is the hard kind. All right, this is the hypotenuse with no square root of 2 on it. So if you would go to your rules on your ISN, it says, if you're given the hypotenuse with no square root of 2, then you will... Take that number, multiply it by the square root of 2, and divide by 2. Yes. You got a what? You can't use your calculator for this. Yeah, just skip the calculator. Just leave it closed. You got to learn it without it. Yep, because you will get a decimal. There are a few, that some of them that will work, but none of them with the square roots in them. Okay, so um, you want to follow the rules and just don't even get the calculator out. I mean, if you want to divide something by 2 or 3 or whatever, you can. But we got to know that the answers here are, do you know M and N are both the square root of 2, guys? We get that? Okay, let me show you why this works also. It says in the pattern that the hypotenuse is the leg times the square root of 2. Well, that still fits this problem because the legs are the square root of 2. If you multiply them by the square root of 2, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Okay, it fits the pattern. 
it just doesn't look the same, all right? So it's not, this is the correct answer. We've got 10 on 7, so this is an easy one. So y is 10 and x is 10 times the square root of 2, all right? You cannot, yeah, just forget the calculator for this. This is all using patterns. Now, 8 is the weird kind. It's the one with the hypotenuse with no square root of 2. So you go and you say, well, it says if the hypot we got to take the hypotenuse, we have to multiply it by the square root of 2, and we have to divide by 2. So when you simplify this, you get 3 square roots of 2. That means V is 3 root 2, and so is U. Both of those, 3 root 2. If you like writing it on your picture, that's fine. All right, try number 9 and 10. Okay, you should have number 9 done. You should have N and M are both 2. Okay, 10 is the weird kind. Quickly, take half a 10, put the square root of 2 on it. Take half a 10, put the square root of 2 on it. Those are your legs. Okay. Now we're going to do some 30, 60, 90s again. If you want to change these to ends, go ahead and do it. And that's just because the problems have a bunch of X's on them. All right, we already went through the rules. You got your rule box. Use it. Identify first what parts you have. If you like highlighting, then you can go ahead and highlight. My short legs I did in pink. The long legs I did in green. And the hypotenuse I did in blue. Don't have to do this, though. Okay? All right. This in, or, or, and if you don't have highlighters, then just write SL, short leg. Long leg. Hypotenuse, if you want. What are you starting with? We're starting with the short leg, so that's the easiest kind. You put a square root of 3 on it, and that will be your long leg, so it'll be 5 root 3. So B is 5 times the square root of 3. A, you take your short leg and double it, so it's going to be 2 times 5, which is 10. Thirty, sixty, ninety. We got the hypotenuse given. To get the short leg, you go and you do 18 divided by 2. That gives me 9 for the short leg. Then you do the long leg and put a square root of 3 on it. 9 square roots of 3. Okay, so y was 9 and x was 9 root 3. 13. Now you've been given the long leg. If you have the long leg given, take off the square root of 3 and put the answer on for the short legs. This would be 5. The hypotenuse is always the short leg doubled. 5 times 2 is 10. I think it's easiest to write the answers onto the pictures. And if you need to write them again somewhere else, then do that later. Okay, what are you given for 14? What is that? Short leg, long leg, or hypotenuse? Short leg. Okay. Short leg given, double it. Where does that go? Multiply it by 2, you get the hypotenuse, longest side. This is your hypotenuse, this is your long leg. All right, so this would be 6. And this would be 3 times the square root of 3. Now, you might be thinking, how am I going to remember which one's got square root of 3 and which one's got square root of 2? Well, one way is that you got your ISM, or you can look it up. The other way is these have three different angles and three different side lengths. So this has got the square root of 3 in it. Also, aren't the angles multiples of 3? 
3 times 10, 3 times 20, 3 times 30. Okay, the, the other triangles, 45, 45, 90s, have two congruent angles and two congruent sides. So they have the square root of 2 on the hypotenuse. At least that's how I tried to remember, remember it. All right, we're given the hypotenuse on 15. I hope you already did 15. You would take 14 divided by 2 to get your y value is 7, and your x is 7 times the square root of 3. Okay, we got the short leg to start with on 16, so that's a nice easy one. Double it for you is 16, and v is 8 root 3. Feeling okay? I hope. All right, try the next four. Someone want to volunteer for 17, what they wrote? Okay. Um, Kylie, what is Y? Correct. There you go. Hmm? That is right. Great. Someone want to share what they did for 18, please. I'm just writing the pattern down for a second in case you'd like to see it again. What did you write for 18 for Y, Bryce? Five, good. And what did you put for X? All right, that's correct. Now, does anybody want to give a shot at the tricky ones? Okay, so you, I see a couple of hands, three hands, good. All right. Um, Murphy? Very good. How did, did you guys get the same thing? Or do we want to talk about that one? All right. Look what this is. This is your long leg. The rule for the long leg is to take the long leg. If you get, To get your short leg, you need to divide, multiply by the square root of 3 and divide by 3. That's where he got square root of 3 on y. And then he multiplied that by 2 for the hypotenuse. That's correct. Okay, so y should have been the square root of 3 and x should have been 2 root 3. All right, now try 20 if you felt uncomfortable with 19 or you think you could fix your 20. Double check your 20 right now. You got the long leg with no square root of 3. Look for the rule. Okay, somebody want to tell me what they have now? You've had a chance to revise it if you needed to. Come on, someone who has not volunteered. Come on, Robert. Okay. Oh, no, wait, do we have, do you guys have the same answers? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, long leg, you take the 6, you multiply it by the square root of 3, and you divide by 3 to get the short leg. That would be 2 root 3, and then double it to get the hypotenuse, 4 root 3. That's correct. Okay, that was done correctly. Good. That's the hardest one right there. All right now, 21 and 22, easy ones, okay? Remember, this one would be your hypotenuse. This is your short leg. Oh, you don't have those? Sorry. You have this? Is it homework time now? Is that what it says? Practice? Okay. So your practice is a little different than this. I do have this worksheet for Monday. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of these on Monday. Um, so please practice. 